Greetings, fellow unknown warriors, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord Lords of the Forest. Episode 3, Making a Name. Yeah, let's let's risk a lot here and just buy a whole bunch of hogs. Go hog wild, if you will. And then try to find a good market for the hogs. We're gonna be herding a lot of hogs, right? Because we have a, we now have hogs in tow. The linked uh, trade settlement to this, to Cantrek here is Maranath, which means that it's not likely that Maranath needs hogs. And then Penkanok is linked to Henok Hen, which also sells hogs. So they probably don't need hogs either. So let's go up to Dunglanis, which does not have a linked. <laughs> Hello, oh, we're being attacked. Hope you Heading up to Dunglanis, which does not have a village that um, has hogs as a village in order to sell our hogs. Uh, if you buy one item at a time, it will remember the price at which you bought it at so that you know what you sold it at. But if you buy multiple uh, in different areas, you'll have to like keep track in your head because I think what the game will do is average out the pur purchasing price. Um, but if you bought like a hundred ore at one place and one ore at another place, that isn't necessarily all that useful. Because you're probably mostly going to be interested in like how much you bought the majority of your product at. There we go. We did lose a Batanian volunteer, but um, we took a bunch of prisoners and we defeated those looters. And now we're moving even slower because we have prisoner of, prisoners of our own. Hiring some additional volunteers. So half of our movement <laughs> is, is prisoners. Uh, we also have the volunteers leveling up here. I don't really want to level them up uh, because I'm trying to keep them cheap. They're basically just paid guards to my caravan. So I'm going to intentionally just leave them unleveled because they're less expensive to run as a result. But if you're wondering, if I did level them up, we have a choice between a clan warrior or a wood runner. Um, and there's a bit of like an upgrade tree so that you can sort of decide what kind of troop you're ultimately going for. Whether they use foxes or whether they use shields and spears or javelins or horses or whatever. It's all part of that like upgrade tree path. And every culture has their own upgrade tree path. Alright, I believe these hogs will sell at profit at Dunglanis. Uh, the other thing I might want to do is not buy animals. Yeah, so it is a profitable trade here. And then I'm also going to part with the pitchforks and hoes and everything else that I don't really need. Our trade is at level 41. Hmm. I don't see that they have much in high volume here. Good for, uh, good for trade. Rugan the Brewer has a caravan ambush quest, but uh, you guys voted that I run some trades. So let's try buying some more hardwoods. That worked for us the first time around. This is hardwood at 20. That's a little expensive for hardwood. Hardwood at 19. So these two towns producing hardwood doesn't, they don't have a ton of surplus hardwood. Uh, let's try for clay. If I could buy clay for under, let's say 10 or so, that would be good. Yeah, here's clay at 10. That's kind of like an average price. And generally speaking, people buy they will buy for less than they are willing to um, to sell for, of course. So you have to get a good deal uh, if you want to make a profit. So here's like clay at nine. Let me buy a little clay at nine. If I can't make a huge profit off of clay, I'll even buy the other clay. You know, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm buying that at 10. 
And we'll go to Orokin over here and buy their clay out. The bottom left, you can it's kind of like a ticker feed of what's going on, who's fighting who, what has been happening. Clay at 11. I'll even do that. All right, so let's try to find somewhere to dump this clay. I'm going to try Rovalt. Yep, they're buying clay at 24. That's a very high price for what I purchased it at, and we leveled up in trade as a result. So very soon we're going to have uh, the opportunity to hit level 50, and that will give us another skill point. Uh, in the keep is uh, is someone that knows something about uh, Neretzi's Folly, but they're in the keep and I can't really go talk to them without bribing the gate guard, and I don't really want to part with that kind of money. The tavern is empty, but I will ransom off my prisoners so we move a bit faster. I should have probably done that already. Alright, let's see about being an iron ore trader. So this is iron ore at 33. Alright. And I will head over to Fenon Itir, which also sells iron ore, and then try to find somewhere to, to offload it all. We're also going to need grain in about three days. If you mouse over, you can see that we have grain for three days left. The fewer mouths that you have to feed, the easier it is and the cheaper it is to run your, uh, your party here. So I'm trying to run as inexpensively as possible with just enough people that... Um, that the average looter party will leave us alone. Oh, and there is a tournament at Penkanop, so let's do that as well. Oh, here is um Dunklanis will even spend will buy this ore potentially for 77, but we would make a big profit if I sold it here. But I'm gonna hold on to it in hopes to sell it for even more at Dunklanis. While I'm here, I will also buy a little bit of food for our troops. I'll buy a little bit of variety of food, which will help to level up my um, stewardship. So like one of everything. So we have a huge food variety and having a huge food variety levels up my stewardship. And let's go into the arena. The arena is a really good way to get, if, if you can win, is a really good way to get money and gear up front early on. And also if you have the right abilities, uh, it's a good way to get renowned too. Uh, another useful tactic is, in the top left, you can see uh, the people that are currently in this arena fight. And if you can focus on knocking out the other lords out of the fight early on, uh, it's going to be easier to win. Because the other lords typically will have better armor than troops. Which might not be true if it's like a really high level troop. But um, the lords also have really, really, really high base skills. And they, unlike the troops... Uh, which generally specialize. So, for instance, a a high-level bowman will typically only have, like, one or two combat skills that are really high level. So if you fight, let's say, a Valandian elite master crossbowman or whatever, he's going to be amazing with crossbows and maybe pretty decent with, like, one-handed weapons. But if the tournament calls for the final battle to be fought with spears, he's going to be pretty useless at using pole arms, right? Well... The lords are really good at, like, all weapons, generally speaking, which makes them sort of a jack-of-all-trades and makes them a lot more dangerous in the arena fights. So if you have the ability to pick targets, try to pick targets that are um, lords first. Knock the lords out to make it easier for yourself. Uh, I don't plan to do smithing at all, but you can make a ton of money um, scrapping equipment and smelting it. And then re-smithing it to fulfill smithing orders and all that. But it's, it's not a route I plan on taking. The other thing is it's also useful to like try to keep your, um, your teammate alive. Because there's definitely safety in numbers. And there's also safety in, you know, having a physical barrier between you and your enemy so you can peek and hide. 
All right, and we're fighting for a broadsword, which is a one-handed weapon I would love to have. So I'm also going to try to turn this horseman around so that my bowman has a clear shot on his back. Which is going to make it far easier to down him. There he goes. Am I planning on starting hunting looters? Uh, well, you guys voted that I run trains, so, so no. I don't really want to be the target of too many enemies at once. So another thing you can see is I'm trying to keep this enemy between me and my other enemies. So that the, this bowman was firing on him, not me. And there we go. Round one. That was easy. And now it's just me and the highborn warrior that I was fighting alongside this whole time. For the inevitable betrayal for that broadsword. Thank you very much. Bye bye. All right. Broadsword. Yes, please. And I'm going to just sell my Norse hatchet. Uh, is that selling? No, that's discarding. This is selling. You actually have to sell, sell to a market. And that leveled up my two-handed a little bit, my one-handed. Right, so there's trade rumors that this will sell at Dunglanis for a lot. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more ore from the surrounding area and then dump all the ore that I can carry more or less at Dunglanis. Because of the food variety I offered my troops, we gained a whole bunch of skill points in stewardship. Because they are like... Oh, you know what? That iron is... A little pricey. I'm not gonna buy that. Which gives me a free focus point that I'm gonna spend in one arm. Let's try buying iron elsewhere. I don't want to buy expensive iron because the price difference between buy and sell is the measure of the experience that I gain off of trade. So the cheaper I buy it and the more I sell it for, the more experience. Oh, and Maranath has a tournament too. Hopefully, uh, one with good reward. So let's do that too. And I've also been meaning to check the taverns for companions, because I would love to hire a good companion. A Highland War Spear. Eh, not probably a weapon I'm going to keep, but I can sell it for money. So, there is one named person, Corian, who's yellow, who I want to knock out of the fight. Uh, but that's, and then there's a red, uh, the Fion here is, is also kind of a uh, harder enemy to kill. So those two, if possible, I want to knock out of the fight as early as possible. I mean, I think I could win at... In, well, yeah, okay. She got knocked out real early, the, the named person in yellow. This is a bad position, man. Where my teammates are done, and I'm knocked down. But because I downed enough people, I didn't get knocked out of the fight. I was... Um, 
productive enough in the previous rounds that I wasn't eliminated, which is good. I got lucky. Because sometimes you're eliminated in those instances, but not always. It depends on uh, how you performed. And now I am in the final round. So I'm going to make a little bit less money from the bets because I lost one round of the bets that I made. But if I win, which is guaranteed now, um, at least I get the prize money. Renown, Highland Warspear, and that can immediately be sold for just shy of a thousand. Also, it looks like uh, the Sumter horses that I bought can be sold here at, at big profit, but I kind of need the Sumter, Sumter horses to move around the inventory that I have, so I'm going to hold on to them, even though it would be a big profit anyway. Um, that's still a little pricey. There's a few other... Hello, traveler. Oh, Hope you brought your... it's a looter. They think they can yeah, win. I... Well, here's my brand new broadsword with my brand new helmet. And this broadsword should be a lot better than the little hatchet I started with. Attack faster, longer range, more damage. Able to cut these little idiots down. And I'm trying to level up my one-handed skill so that I can become a duelist for the arena. So any opportunity to level up my one-handed is perfect. And we won. I leveled up my one-handed four points. Took a bunch of prisoners too. I'm going to double back to Marinath just to ransom out the prisoners because they're going to slow us down. And then I also sell the random junk that I got. I don't think any of this gear is better than what I'm currently wearing, so I can part with it without any hesitation. And we, you know, we're making pretty good money. You know, being very economical about who we hire and what we buy, we're up to about 6.5k, which isn't terrible. Where'd the spear go? Yeah, it was sold. Oh, here is someone else with a little information about Naritzi's folly. So, Melodier. Hey. Well, King Caladog's great victory. Who would we? Who would dare say anything to tarnish its shine? King Errol disappeared while hunting, and Caladog becomes king. He leads the tribes to war. Oh, we were eager enough, even though Errol made a truce with the Emperor, sealed by oaths. When we were dazzled with the prospect of vengeance, who cares about the sacred word and honor? The ambush, masterfully planned and executed, that none can deny. But I will also not deny that the Sturgeons fought the main body of the Imperial force, and the Volandians fought their uh, famous cavalry, so I don't think the greatest glory went to the Sons of Batania. At the end of the day... What have we gained? The Sturgeons hate us more, worse than ever. The Volandians too. The Emperor, I suppose, is shattered. What can I say? I believe the war should have a goal. But I'm in a minority, it seems, among our people. So, he thinks that, uh, you know, it was not a glorious war. We were a bit oath-breaking. Um, but oh well. Malden, thank you for the resub. I'm not really interested in uh, picking up quests for non-Batanian towns. I don't mind building up my relation with the Batanian town leaders, but for West Empire town leaders, don't care. I'm really just here for products. And their ore was cheaper than Batanian ore, so purchased. Uh, and let's also go to Valthea uh, and Mechalovia for the same thing. If it's ore that's roughly under 50 or so, I'll pick it up. Oh, and Ep Epicadria also has an arena fight. Um, it's also worth noting that the arena fights are a bit um, cultural flavored. So if you're fighting in Batanian lands, it's typically going to be bows and two-handed weapons 
And then in the Empire lands, it's going to be, you know, like sword and board types or sword and spear type things, sometimes mounted. Every land has its own combat style, and typically the arena fights um, mimic that combat style. So, you know, if you're over in Crusade, it might be some horse archery, that kind of thing. So here you have a, a classic legion uh, formation with a little, a little cavalry, a little spear, a little javelin, and uh, a larger arena. Now, and they're. Let's see about hitting some of these horsemen. Oh, our horsemen are going down. Yeah, he looks about on last legs up there. Oh, wow. The, the, uh, I just knocked out our own dude. <laughs> Let's call it an accident. You can also kill the horse out from under them. Um, generally, they will just go to the next horse and get get on. The other thing I could do is I can hop on the horse myself with the sword that I have, and that might be a little bit more effective, or swap any weapons that I want. So I can pick up any of the weapons that I find on the ground. So now it's just me and this uh, horseman with a lance. And then the bow that I have on my back can't be used on horseback because it's a large bow. So... I am going to be in a bit of a disadvantage jousting this guy, so what I want to do is I want to get nice and close because the sea doesn't have a spear and just slash him a whole bunch. And he might want to run away from... Oh, no, he's... He's sticking it out. That's a bad idea, friend. He does have a sword, but... Can you use it well? Not well enough. All right, me versus some random archer. No problem. Drop your guard. Bye bye. All right, two v two. Javelins. So javelins, you don't get many of them, but they hit like a truck. All right, my teammate went down, so I gotta, uh, there we go. I gotta get rid of this dude. Cause a 2v1, or 1v2 I should say, a uh, melee fight sucks to fight. Cause it's really hard to block two incoming swords and still manage to dish out damage to your enemies. Unless there's some sort of terrain advantage, like if you have a height advantage or there's a um, difficult terrain to traverse where you can sort of trap the enemies or whatever. And it's me versus my teammate that got knocked down. A little bit of moon in him. He doesn't know how to block. You know, I can better punch him to death. Hey, buddy, you want to get punched to death? Or, I guess it's not death, right? You never die in the arena. You just get knocked out. Even though the, the blades look metallic, they're not wooden. I'm tired. You, you cut me. You're, you're going down the traditional way now. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, what do we got? It's a higher-level sword. It, uh... It has a length of 103, my broadsword has a shorter length. So I, because I'm typically on horseback, the longer the one-handed blade, the better. So I will absolutely buy that, or uh, equip that rather, and then sell the other one. Taking a look at their markets. Iron ore for 39, bought. So now I have a ton of iron ore. I have a lot of iron ore, and I'm looking for a market for it. Now, I was headed to Mechalivia, and I'm a little worried that buying Epicatria's iron ore will have driven up the price. Yeah, 57. Driven up the price of that, um, the iron ore in Mechalivia. So I'll head over to Valthea, and then I'll look for a market for all the iron. Riding skill. Uh, we have got 
Uh, let me make sure that none of these are bugged. Okay, yeah, they're both working. Cool. Um, charge damage dealt for per myself goes up, and charge damage dealt by the troops in my formation goes up. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that um, Batanian troops don't... They don't have really good cavalry troops, so they and they don't have any chargers really at all. The cavalry that they end up getting in their typical cavalry group is a horseman with a shield and an axe and um, a skirmisher with javelin, a sword, and a shield. And a scout, which is the lower level horseman that's even light, more lightly armored than the horseman himself. So there's not... There are some factions that get like chargers. Like the Volandian lancers are like chargers, but uh, Batanians really aren't chargers at all. And then the other one is my horse maneuvers better and the riding skill of the troops in my formation go up. So uh, I'm just going to pick this one. It's kind of obvious. I'm going to go with Noble Steed. No need to pull for it. Ooh, we found an enemy hideout. So, clearing hideouts without being asked to by local village leaders. Oh, and we're going to attack by a bunch of forest bandits. who are a little bit more dangerous than regular looters or raiders because oh, they have bows. So, my um, youngsters here are probably not going to fare as well because they're going to get cut down by arrows while trying to close. Meaning that I'm going to be responsible for doing the brunt of the the combat here. So what I'm trying to do is come at an angle so that not all of the enemy bowmen are trying to fire at me at once. And then get close enough out. Get close enough to engage them in the melee. But I'm getting shredded by arrows. All right, I'm gonna back off before I get knocked out. The Batalian, Batanian volunteers are dropping. They're taking a few out with them, but like, not many. And I think now they're all but unconscious. And the, uh, the freebooters of the, uh, oh, there goes my horse. These units here are ranged, these bushwhackers. So they're going to prioritize uh, ranged over melee. But they're not very smart. So in situations where, like, I'm outnumbered and cornered, I wish I had more arrows. I can fight like this, but they really aren't. Mm. Wow, my bow skill's so bad I can't even hit. Where they're really not able to, like, counter me all that effectively. I wish that was a head, not a shoulder. There we go. Peekaboo. Good for bow skill. And if you wanted to re-up your arrows, you could look down at their, um, their quivers and just fill up as well refilling your own quivers with arrows. So not the sexiest fight, but, you know, we won. Take a whole bunch of them prisoner. And I did get a better bow out of that. I got a legendary uh, mountain hunting bow, which is uh, a higher quality level of the mountain bow that I had, so it has better stats. I can also take a second um, quiver because I don't use a shield so I take a second quiver so I can have more shots before I run out. Uh, and then I literally didn't have any armor, arm, uh, armor, so I'm taking the bracers and looting everything else. Okay, bow skill. Uh, bow control. Accuracy penalty while moving and damage with bows by troops in my formation. I'm just going to make sure that none of these are bugged. No, none of them are bugged. Or uh, dead aim. Headshot with uh, bows. I'm going to have you guys pick. So this bow control... Um, what skill? 
Bow control uh, allows me to have less of an accuracy penalty while I move, and the damage by bows in my troop and my formation do more damage. The strongest that the the strongest units of bananas have is elite bowmen. So archery skills are, are very important. The other one is dead aim. I will do more headshot damage, and then the troops in my formation will have a higher level bow skill, meaning that they'll be more effective with bows. So one is that they do more damage with bows, and one is that they're more effective with bows. So bow controller dead aim. Have you guys pick? I'll leave that alone. Uh, I am critically wounded, and then all the troops in my control, all two of them that have survived, are also pretty bad. Wow. That iron ore is way overpriced. Not buying that. All right, let's head back to Maranath. Because I think they will buy my iron for a premium price. I hope. And I'm also going to need to hire, hire some more volunteers because... Um, Uh-oh. Uh, we're getting jumped. Fight me if you dare. Oh, I can't even... Send troops... So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna load from that. Uh, I thought I was not critically wounded, but I don't really want to be captured. I'm just gonna sit at this uh, town and wait a while until I'm healed up, so that I don't get jumped by uh, by anyone. I feel like the chickens are making chicken noises for the loss I just suffered. Which is fair. Alright, I am healed up enough that I'd be able to fight. Oh, Jesus. I don't really want to fight Eleven. All right, we, meaning Batanians, uh, move in forest well. But not so much when we're encumbered and hurting. Which is why these forest bandits can catch us. But I think I can win this. So that's okay. As long as I can actually be in the fight. Damn it! It should be okay. Get moving! So I'm going to tell my boys to uh, leave this one to me. So I, I don't lose even more troop. And this is how the Batanians defeated the Empire, right? Ah! Oof, ouch, by taking arrows to the chest. We uh, ambushed them from the trees. This is the Batanian way. And the second quiver is um, nice to have because I can miss a lot more. I cannot wait until I get a better bow. That's right! <laughs> Alright, ooh, a scarf. Nice. I always wanted a scarf. And better boots, by one point. And some butter. These were the butter bandits. The fabled butter bandits. Very, very dangerous in the larder. Alright, uh, bow control, we go. Or, right? You guys voted bet. Why am I so bad at this? Yeah, bow control. And then a free focus point. Uh, let's go... So it looks like I'm getting close to my athletics max. So I'm going to spend a focus point so that we can continue leveling up athletics quickly. And maybe next point go with bows because I'm getting pretty close to my bow max as well. And I'm going to head to the closest town so I can pick up some more, um, more guards. Because these forest bandits are going to be a problem sooner or later. Stewardship and medicine's going up. Good.
All right, hopefully Marinath still is selling uh, or buying iron at good prices. All right, and I'm going to have you guys vote on what to do next. Oh, there's actually one more thing I could do is uh, find a companion. That sounds dirty. It's not like Inara from Firefly. It's uh, it's someone to fight alongside me. So there you go. You can pick between that. Uh, you know, that's not an awesome price, but I'll sell it. Now we have 10K. That's not bad. It's not a bad amount of money. Uh, let's go ahead and ransom the prisoners off. Because we don't hire prisoners for our own um, party. It's not what we're about. I kind of like that hardwood trade we had going on earlier. So I'm going to see if the hardwoods have been refre uh, refreshed in Sianan. Because that would be awesome if we could, uh, if we could move a bunch of hardwood. And I also need to hire a few more youngsters to control the horses so that we lose the hurting penalty for moving speed. Whoa, you have literally no hardwood for sale. Weird. Twenty apiece. Eleven apiece. Uh, I'll do eleven apiece. All right. Rumors. Sell at Marinath for twenty-nine apiece. So let's go to. So about these. Yeah, let's go over to Uthlame. Oh, actually, Uthlame looks like it got raided or is in the process of being raided. But they're selling uh, hardwood very cheap, so I'm going to buy it. Sorry, Uthlame. There's also someone in Uthlame Castle that can tell me about the Nerysi's Folly. And that would be... Someone in the dungeon who I don't have access to. So, nope. Someone that knows something got arrested. Thrown in the clink. No, oh, Engulther. There we go. There's someone else that knows something. Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? And you guys want me to find a companion, so I'll do that next. I am Engulther of the De Cortain. So he's, uh, he's Valandian. One of the most illustrious families. Yeah, uh-huh. Of the annals of the Valandian kingdom. Uh, alright. What can you tell me about Pendriac? I was there. I was just a young squire then. So, how old is he? He is 42? Dude, you were... Mm, okay, sure. Uh, this, of course, happened, what, like seven years ago? So, I don't... Okay, he was a squire for an embarrassing long time. I have heard no sweeter music than the thunder of our hooves as we bore down on the Azurai rabble. We fell on them like a falcon plunges upon a rabbit. They had overextended themselves, chasing the Im Imperial archers, light foot before our knights. There was no contest. Let me tell you something. Nine-tenths of victory is recognizing when your enemy has made a mistake. The rash perish as swiftly as the weak and deserve it just as much. We should have gone on to seize all the Western Empire. If Deathert had any manhood, we had would have done so. But his heart was never in the war. He believed he'd broken the oath to the Empire by helping the Sturgeons and it nod at him. He'd have made a fine lackey Instead, he's our king. So he obviously does not uh, think very highly of Engulther. Or Deathert, rather. Um, his relation of zero with him. And that's all I need to know.
Yeah, young Squire at the tender age of 35. Squire should be like, what, 18 to 22, let's say? He was a, he was just a, a late bloomer. Oh, here we go. Selling the hardwood for way more than we bought it for. Got four points of trade in the process. Cha-ching! And you guys voted for me to find a companion. So find a companion. Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord Lords of the Forest, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 27th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Batanians.